welcome once again to this happy Sabbath and welcome again for Praise Life. And as we begin our worship, let us all lift our hearts to Jesus. Lift our hearts so that we will be personally connected to him in singing songs. You know, song praising God is also, you can do it by singing. Not only by reading, not only by meditation, by praising. You, you sing as you praise God. Let's all lift our hearts. Let us connect with Jesus and bring glory and honor to him. To him. And for our first psalm, as we begin our worship, we say, we say open the eyes of my heart, Lord. given to man by which he can be saved is only Jesus. When in trouble, ask Jesus. When in anxiety, is Jesus. When you're happy, it's Jesus. When you're traveling life's rugged road, it's Jesus. Ask Jesus. And Jesus is the only name that we can be saved.
Blessed be the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Many of us are low in voices, uh, but today is the day, a day of rest and gladness. Uh, let us enjoy ourselves in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave us life and breath of life where we could be able to live, breathe, move, and have our being. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Hopeside Community Adventist Church welcomes you wholeheartedly. We are a small family. We want to feel at home, enjoy every bit of moment, spending time with us. I know the name of the Lord is glorified and magnified in each one of our lives. Once again, we want to welcome each one of you in the name of Jesus for this divine heart. Uh, this week, we are very glad to have Dr. Sonia brings God's word to each one of us. She is the director of the Hopeside Pillars Women's Ministry. May we be blessed by her message as she brings God's word to each one of us today. And of course, every second week of the month is focused on health matters. Here's the quote to reflect on this theme. Love yourself enough to live a healthy lifestyle. That make sense? Mm -hmm. Love yourself enough to live a what? Healthy life. Uh, the author who wrote this is unknown, uh, but the fact what he wrote is absolutely known. We do have Prophecy Live on every Saturday at 3 p.m. EST and of course on Sundays at uh, 9 a.m. You can join by Zoom or by YouTube. Uh, we do have the midweek prayer meeting on every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. And of course we do have uh, Friday Vespers meeting too at uh, 8 p.m. And you can do participate in all the Hopeside services by Zoom and uh, YouTube. Women's Bible Study is on every Saturday at 4 p.m. Uh, by Zoom only. Uh, please note, okay, Dr. Sonia Selwyn will be able to lead uh, okay, this Women's Ministry Bible Study. And Hopeside Pillars Women's Retreat will be from October 7 to 9 in Ocean City at St. Peter's Lutheran Church. Okay, Retreat Center. Oh, wow. Please to contact Dr. Sonia, okay, for your information and further details in this regard of uh, a retreat by women. And of course, pray fasting is on every Tuesday at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. WhatsApp group name is Pray Fasting to join. And uh, this is mainly to pray regarding the church building project that we have been uh, able to talk about. And uh, the Lord in his own infinite mercy will be able to hear each one of our prayers and this project might be completed. And of course, we do have any other prayer requests that you can put forth, and we always join together in praying uh, for one another. And the fasting format is based on individual preferences as to what one may wish to fast from, and how much one can fast during the time set aside for this fasting and praying. And of course, all are welcome for uh, the luncheon after the uh, church service. And people who are watching online, please do join us. We're most welcome for luncheon, and we'll be very happy to have you. Okay, and join and uh, you know have lunch with each one of us. And these are a few announcements that I had, and uh, uh, want to uh, praise God for everything that He has been able to do to each one of us, especially through Oakside. And uh, we have been so much blessed to be a part of this community and this church. Once again, I take this opportunity to welcome each one of you in the name of Jesus. God is good. All the time, all the time, God is, God is good. It's appropriate to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And let's all try together and uh, uh, experience uh, the presence of the Lord amidst us as we join hands in worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. May God bless each one. And to begin with, let's all join and sing this beautiful song called as Shall We Gather at the River to Be. Shall we gather at the river? Yes, Jesus is the river of life. And we are gathered together with Jesus. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod?
Now it's time to now it's time for our intercessory prayer. All those who have prayer of thanks, prayer of request, or silent request, please feel free to express them. And I'll give this time to all of you to express your prayers. I thank God for for the sustenance, for keeping me through all the thick and the thin, and the and for. Uh, keeping my me, my family, and every everyone with whom I'm connected, safe and sound. Amen. Does anyone else want to express? Um, I'd also like to thank God for all the blessings He has given me and my family during the past days. He has been leading us in wondrous ways uh, through all difficult times and good times. I praise God for that. I also thank God for everything and I have unspoken requests. Okay. Anyone else? Unspoken requests. Unspoken requests. Okay. And thank God for uh, last week's uh, 11th anniversary uh, celebration. Uh, many times we may think uh, things uh, are not exactly working out according to our plan, but uh, God is still leading us through everything, through the wilderness especially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? With that said, let us all reverently kneel down and seek the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your mercy, your grace, and your love for us. Despite us being sinful and despite us falling short of your glory, still you took care of us. You showed us mercy and you made sure that all our needs are met. With this, few, few of our sisters and brothers have come to express their gratitude towards you. Sister Melanie expressed her gratitude that you have sustained her throughout this week. Just like her, there are so many others who also felt that you have taken care of them, but they have not expressed it out. Either ways, we give you the glory, Father, because you are a father who never forsake his children. Father, Sister Dr. Sonia also expresses her gratitude that you have sustained her throughout the last week. Even Sister Amuda also expressed that you have taken care of her. Father in heaven, we all express our gratitude for you taking care of us through the last week. And we know that you will take care of us even in this upcoming week. Amen. Father, we thank you that Hope Sag has celebrated its 11th anniversary last week. We thank you that there are many members who have joined to celebrate with us. And we give you the glory, Father, you are the church, and that we are your vessel. Continue to use us as Hope Side members to reach out to others, so that others will know of your love and your salvation. Father, we pray for Sister Amuda and Sister Mary as they have unspoken requests. Whatever it may be, we pray that we leave all of them at thy feet. Father, you are the source, you are the answer to all our problems. You are the remedy to our, to our sickness. Help us, Father, with our unbelief. Help us with our shortcomings. Have mercy on us. Father, we pray for the speaker of the hour, as Dr. Sonia, as she's going to break the bread of life. It is not she who speaks, but it's you who speak through her. We pray, Father, that you will fill her with the Holy Spirit and wisdom from above so that she can reach out to us and help us as members to prepare our hearts as we hear thy servant speak. Be with all those who are not here physically, whatever the reason may be, we pray that you will keep them safe and we hope to see them in the next week. Once again, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we come 
with our tithes and offerings in the Lord's presence. Let us give our tithes for the Lord has promised that if you give your tithe, the windows of heaven will be open so that you will have no hands to hold the bountiful blessings that God will give you in return. So let us not give God because he's going to give you, give you back, but because we love him. Let's pray for that uh, offering. Gracious Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you for being with us. Thank you for blessing us with another Sabbath. Lord, as we come to you with your, uh, in your presence with our little tithe and offering, Lord, we pray that you will bless this offering. You will bless our tithe. Lord, we give you because we love you. Not out of compulsion, but Lord, because of our love for you, O oh Lord. Be with us and help us to give more in abundance so that your work will be uh, in uh, in progress mighty father we pray for this tithe let it be blessed fourfold that all that they be gave may be uh, may be used in your vineyard to bring glory and honor to thee and bring many many souls into thy kingdom in jesus Christ's name i pray amen, amen. Shabbat Shalom. Today's scripture reading is found in Psalms 42:11. Please stand for the scripture reading. The word of God reads, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. And now we'll have the theme song. After that, the uh, spiritual food will be brought to us by Dr. Sonia.
I hope you all had a beautiful week and God has been leading you all that you have come here safely to worship God yet another Sabbath. I praise God for all who are here to worship together and I praise God for all those who are watching us on YouTube and on uh, Facebook Live. The topic I have chosen for today is spiritual spirituality for mental health. Spirituality for men, mental health. Uh, I hope this would be practical, interesting, and something that is useful for all of us. And the the quote that is found on our website is love yourself enough to live a healthy lifestyle. Love ourselves enough to live a healthy lifestyle. So healthy lifestyle, we exercise, we eat healthy, we eat uh, right protein, we do not eat carbs. Well, how about our mental health? Are we thinking about our mental health, about our mental, mental wellness? Do we ignore that? Because a lot of emphasis is, emphasis is given on living healthy, on exercising and eating fruits, vegetables. But what about our mind? Um, because around 5% of people in the U.S. are having mental disease. So isn't it something that is important that we have to think about? Let's have a word of prayer before we continue. Our dear Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, at this time, I submit myself unto your care. May the words I speak not be mine, but from you. May your spirit hover upon all those who are listening so that your message will touch their hearts and their minds so that they will live a healthy lifestyle, both mentally and physically and spiritually. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirituality for mental health. Spirituality for mental health. Uh, now, why is this topic important to us? Statistics shows that uh, World Health Organization says that one third of leading cause of disability in the world is mental illness. It is surprising that clinical Depression ranks number eight cause of disability in low-income countries. But surprisingly, it's number one in mid- and high-income countries. And depression has doubled in college students in the last 15 years. So what has gone wrong? Uh, do we have enough spirituality and religiosity? News says that there is a lot of celebrities. Many celebrities are also having depression. And 48 celebrities have come out and said, yeah, we are suffering from depression. We are suffering from mental illness so that they can help the other people who also undergo the same problem. Uh, even uh, Princess Diana was undergoing depression. And there is a lot of news that says that over 3,000 famous people, 300, uh, yeah, around 300 famous people are uh, undergoing depression. Depression is not only in one country, not only in the US, it is all over the world. In India, farmers have depression. And students who do not pass their 12th standard are suiciding. They're depressed because they did not uh, get the marks that they wanted. Young youth are also in depression. And you see in the slide, if you can see, there are many reasons why people are having depression. <laughs> I was thinking that farmers in India are having depression, but then I saw the news that farmers in the US are also having depression. And it is surprising to see that closest family relationships can lead to depression. Betrayal traumas can have 
lasting mental effects on mental health. So with all these statistics, with all these news, now, what is our assurance in God? What does God say? 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. We do not have to fear. We do not have to be depressed. But of power and of love. God has given us power. God has given us love. And of sound mind. Our minds have to be sound because God has blessed us. We don't have to worry. When do, when do we have problems? with our sound mind, when we do not trust God, isn't it? When we trust ourselves, when we trust human beings, when we believe people more than we believe God, that's when problem starts. But God has given us power and love so that we will all have sound mind. Now, there is a difference between religiosity and spirituality. So what's the difference between religiosity and spirituality? Anyone here? Well, religiosity focuses on established religious groups and belief system, and it encourages the members to believe in their doctrines, in their sp uh, scriptural teachings and traditions. But spirit spirituality is more about the connection of a person with God, personal connection. So it is the experience of connecting with God the path that an individual takes by himself or herself. And it is a practical application of what they have learned in the religious organization. If you see about spirituality, mainly it focuses on a person trying to find the purpose of life. Why are you here on this earth? What is your purpose? Why has God created you? Sometimes I wonder, what, Ullar, what? Do you want me to do in this world? What is the purpose? So if we do not find the purpose of our life here, then we, are, we can easily get depressed. That is the reason why spirituality is very important. Spirituality is trying to find the meaning of life and getting connected with ourselves, with our fellow beings and with God and with nature. That is spirituality. So when you have the those confidence in your life, it is very difficult for you to go into mental illness. Meaning of mental health. It is a state of mental well-being that enables people to cope with stresses in our life with and realize our ability and learn well and make the right decisions and build relationships and work well. Have you ever felt that you have depression? You do not have a very good mental, mental well-being? Do you have stress in your life? Are you able to take the right decision or sometimes are your decisions wavered because your mind is not stable because of all the problems around you? It is very critical now, not only in personal life, because it affects the community and the economic system as a whole. What are the causes of mental health problems? Maybe it may be child abuse. Maybe ch during the childhood days, they had some abuse, some trauma. Or even th when the children are neglected, sometimes I feel, oh, sometimes I really neglect my uh, children when I'm at work and doing my research or doing st stuff. And my son sometimes says, mommy, uh, you should spend some time with me. My older one says, you do not understand about my mental health day. Uh, mental health you know so that is when I really realize oh my children are also having different kinds of uh, stress different kinds of problems which I need to be there for them and social isolation and loneliness sometimes we are in a group but we feel so lonely inside deep inside us have you felt that I see many of you nodding your head yes it is there you have a lot of people around you but deep inside yourself you're feeling lonely because uh, there's something missing in your life. Uh, you have, you may have experienced some discrimination at workplace because you are different from them. Yeah, yeah? or uh, some uh, gender stigma or some stereotypes. You may be socially disadvantaged, or you might be poor when compared to others. You may have debt in your life and long-term stress. 
okay or you may even have some health problems long term health problems when i have a fever headache how can i work i'm stressed i'm depressed right so all these are some of the causes of mental health unemployment homelessness drugs and alcohol misuse domestic violence trauma betrayal of the spouse uh serious incidents like there are some victims of violent crimes and some injuries so there are so many many reasons why mental health illness occurs now let's see some examples in the bible okay we are seeing okay we i face mental uh, health problems i face problems i face depression now what about the bible characters did they face bible did they face depression yes yes give an example david david, david. as soon as i talk about depression i think about david yes you all know the story of david he was uh, a man after god's own heart but did he face depression yes he was in anguish he was lonely despaired he feared the enemies just imagine running away from your own son who wants to kill you i cannot even imagine my son coming behind me to kill me you know what kind of state of mind would he had been and he cried over his guilt he did something bad he uh, he, he had a hard cry over sin and guilt he lost his sons so but you know what he uh, prayed in psalms 38:4 he says my guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear he did something bad and he's feeling so guilty about it and he's asking god to forgive him but he he had a very close connection with god that is why i said spirituality is very important to have a good mental health spirituality david had a very close connection with god that is the reason why he was able to overcome all these problems the same way when we have problems in life we can overcome just like david if we have a personal connection with god not just religiosity in religiosity what we do we come to church we associate with people but the spirituality is a, uh, is an individual connection with god and uh, psalms 42:11 uh, david beautifully says why are you down heart o oh my soul why so disturbed within me so he's telling himself why are you so down hearted why are you disturbed o oh my soul put your hope on god for i will yet praise him my savior and my god so he's saying put your trust on god because he has been overwhelmed with problems just like you just like me do not think that everybody is uh, having a very good mental health no there are many problems that every person faces anand ne the other day was telling me uh, that we have to pray for people who uh, are homeless and people who have problems and he told me uh, sonia we should not assume that all of them are happy and all of them are uh, uh, in a very good mental health no everybody has different kinds of problem we have to keep praying for them it was true i didn't realize maybe people might seem happy out in uh, outer but then deep inside them we do not know what's happening they may have many problems their children their wife their husbands their uh, family their uh, financial situation work many problems though there is a smile in their face deep inside their heart we do not know what's happening so we have to be considerate when we associate with people next is elijah elijah he was victorious he had spiritual victories over the prophets of baal but then can you imagine him running uh, because jezebel was trying to kill him he was discouraged he was weary and you know what he prayed in first king 194 he says yeah uh, amuda ka says right take my life i have had enough lord he said take my life i am not better than my ancestors i'm not better take my life you know so that much stress that much problem he had because he was running he didn't have food he didn't have things just imagine that uh, you have to run away 
you cannot even imagine you know you have to run into the desert you don't have place to stay you don't have clothes you don't have money you don't have food so job is the next character in the bible he suffered through great loss devastation physical illness pain and his wife what did he say curse god and die are you still holding on your integrity curse god and die you know with all the problems he 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 was depressed don't you think he was depressed are you and me in that situation do you think worms are in our body no we are in good health we are still coming to church we are still going for work just imagine having worms crawling all over the body itching and uh, he couldn't even scratch himself he was sitting in ashes he was depressed with the family his children all died he had nothing all his property was lost but why did he sustain all this depression and problem why he had great connection with god his spirituality was in his peak that's why he was able to overcome this that's the reason why we our relationship also should be in par with how job had and if you read the the verses given in job it really uh, touches your heart just listen to this in job 3:11 it says why did i not perish at birth and die as i came from the womb job 3:26 says i have no peace no quietness i have no rest but only turmoil have you felt sometimes that way oh lord i have no peace i have no rest i have no quietness only trouble in my life job 10:1 says i loathe my very life therefore i will give free range to my complaints and speak out in the bitterness of my soul i'm going to speak out to god and job uh, 30 15 to 17 says terrors overwhelm me my life ebbs away days of suffering grip me night pierces my bones in the night is not able to sleep pain pierces his bones and my groaning pains never rest is having so much pain next example is adam adam imagine you are the adam okay and you have been placed in heaven and all of a sudden you are chased out of heaven just imagine that you are a king you are there in a palace living a beautiful life with many servants and you are now suddenly homeless with no money no food nothing how would you feel would you be depressed how was adam's mental health okay not only that he goes out he is working toiling and one son becomes a murderer imagine one son becomes a murderer how would you feel and your other son is being murdered you lost two sons all of a sudden what is the state of adam we never think of all these right we always think that all the prophets and all our forefathers they all enjoyed life the bible characters they all enjoyed life they were blessed by god but even the first person who was created on this earth suffered but how did they overcome did they have mental illness did they go under depression for a long time no they tried their best to come back because they depended on god that is what we should learn that is how we need to overcome and jeremiah he is called the weeping prophet he was constantly rejected by the people whom he loved and god had called him to preach yet forbidden him to get married and have children just imagine pastor if you were forbidden to get married and have children you will be living a lonely life right it is so difficult for us and then uh jeremiah still had a close relationship with god he was lonely he wrestled with despair and he had a great sense of failure and jeremiah 20 14 to 18 listen to this verse what he says curse be the day i was born why did i ever come out of womb to see troubles and sorrows and to end my days in shame he's asking god why why so uh sometimes when i hear people saying oh i wish i die i i don't want to have this trouble i i think okay 
uh, maybe I've not come to that situation yet, but then there are many people having different problems. What are we doing for them? Uh, now, there are four things that we should understand how to establish a stable mental health. Spirituality to establish the stable mental health. The four points are number one, finding a purpose. Number two, building a personal relationship with God. Number three, creating better relationship with others. And four, connecting with nature. So these are the four things we need to do to have better spirituality in our life. Finding a purpose. Find God's purpose in your life. First Peter 2, 9 beautifully says your purpose in life. You don't even have to go and find now. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special position that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God has a purpose for you now. And Isaiah 46, 10 to 11 says, I made known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, which is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. God has a purpose for you and that will come to pass at the right time. The only thing is we need to submit our lives to God. We, we do not submit our, ourselves to God. That's a very problem. We have our own ways to go. And then in the end, God pushes us back and says, oh, this is what you need to do. Cry out to God and uh, God so that he will fulfill his purpose in our lives. Psalms uh, 57 to I cry out to God most high. Oh God, who fulfills his purpose for me. So every time we have to ask, oh Lord, what is your purpose for me? And Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, there is a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heaven. There is a time for everything. If you are in trouble, if you have pain, if you have financial difficulties, if you have family problems, that's going to pass away. Everything is going to pass away. Just depend on God. Thank God for all the good things that is happening in your life. And praise God. This Everything will pass away and you're going to be happy once again. God says in Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in a person's heart. We have so many plans, but only the Lord's purpose will prevail. And we need to think positively always. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you love God, everything is going to happen for good. When we have the promise, why do we have to be worried? What is our duty? We have to fear God and keep his commandments and teach all nations. In our workplace, we have to be an example. We don't have to go baptizing them, but we can lead them to baptism by teaching them. Our life should be an, an example for them, right? But many times we are not. The second point is creating a better relationship. Now with others. Philippians 2, 3 says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let's not fight with others. Why do we have to fight? We are not going to be here for a long time. Hardly another, uh, we live for 60, 65, 70. Blessed people may live uh, up to 100. I do not whether that is a blessing or not. Living for until 100 years old. But we're going to live here for a very short time when compared to millions and millions of years, we are going to live in heaven. Why do we have to have strife? Why do we have to uh, be having misunderstandings? Romans 12, 10 says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honoring, preferring one another. Love one another, show kindness. Ephesians uh, 4, 29 says that we, our communication that comes out of our mouth should not be corrupt. We have to love others and even if we have to lay down our life for our brothers um so the third point is develop a personal relationship with god how can we develop a personal relationship with god we know we know that we have to pray without ceasing we should read the word of god but are we doing it that is the problem. We know many things, but many things we do not do. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I 
think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts to, of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God wants to give us so much blessing. Ellen White says that um, angels are surprised because the blessings, the doors are ready to be opened and the blessings are ready to be poured down. But only thing is the people have to ask. And the angels are surprised that people are not asking God. People are uh, not asking God in the way they're supposed to ask God. You know, so John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man come to the father, but through me. Jesus was an example in this earth. Follow him and we will be not having any mental issues. First uh, Peter 5, 6 to 7 says we should humble ourselves, cast all our burdens to God and God will take care of us. So that is the way we can have personal relationship with God. Have complete faith, uh, faith on God, submit ourselves completely to God and have constant communication with God and understand that when you keep all your burdens to God, God is going to Take care of you. Deuteronomy 31 8 says, he, he will not fail us, He will not forsake us. So we should not be dismayed. We should not fear. And Isaiah 59 2 says that, what, what, what is the problem? Why are we separated from God? It is because of our sins, right? So we have to ask God every single day to forgive our sins that we have done knowingly or unknowingly. The last point is, Connecting to nature. Now, how do we connect to nature? Why do you think that we should connect to nature? Do you think we should just go and hug a tree? <laughs> how do we connect to uh, nature? So, uh, there's a statistic that shows that uh, when people are with nature, they heal well. Even their mental state is good. Uh, there was uh, a, a research that was conducted where one patient, patient was... Uh, given a, a bed near the window uh, with nature, plants, trees outside. And another um, patient was just having a wall near this window. And the person who looked out in the window and admired nature healed faster than the other person. See, Abhuda Akar, you're a nurse, right? She says that is true. <laughs> Not only that, pictures and sounds of nature that's why uh, at home, what I do, I have paintings. I have paintings of waterfalls, paintings of uh, mountains and hills and trees. And I look at that and I, I feel that I'm in nature. That is something good. I didn't know that it was good till yesterday when I read that. Even pictures and sounds of waterfalls, mountain waves and rain. Uh, Selvin and I had gone to Mexico a few months ago where we had a room near the waves in the seashore and morning night throughout the night and the morning i could hear the waves you know uh, the the sound of waves was so peaceful there was deep peace in my heart i, I didn't realize why i was so happy why i was so uh, peaceful but now i realize that such waves the waterfalls mountains they have an influence on our mental well-being. So do you want to uh, be having a very good mental health? Go out to the mountains. We have so many rivers and uh, Mount Dennis and her husband and Bernadette every Saturday afternoon, they go hiking to the mountains. I'm sure they have a very good mental health because of the, the time they spend in nature. It has a calming effect on human bodies and our minds. Sometimes what we do when we walk, uh, uh, we go hiking, we have our phone listening. Always phone, looking at our phone. No, we should stop, relax, let the brain take over. Let's not always be on our phone because when, when we look at our phone, it occupies our mind. That's the reason sometimes when I go walking, I just keep my phone away and just relax and walk in nature. So... Exposure to natural environment Im impacts our body and our men mental health as well. Research findings shows that children who play in nature increases their memory. They're able to make better decisions. Like when they're going, to, going out and uh, jumping near in the stone, they will think, okay, if I jump here, will I fall? Will I not? Can I jump? 
they are able to take decisions but if they're just playing video games there, there is nothing that they can uh, learn and they're uh, they're fully engrossed in the games my kids are also sometimes engrossed in the games i find it difficult to take them out i tell them okay go go out and play you know so uh, even children who play with nature in the nature will have an increased self worth and they have lesser behavioral issues if you have problem with children behaving badly take them to nature take them for a walk and they will have um, better behavior this is uh, not just a statement this is uh, research that is conducted by duke university harvard university on mental health researches so this this information is really true uh, now there is a research quote that says that by school of public health in australia there was a research which states human beings depend on nature not only for food water and shelter by also but also for emotional psychological spiritual needs so uh, we have to depend on nature not only for food and uh, shelter but for our emotional and psychological and spiritual needs the american there was an american research which said spending time in nature is a powerful inexpensive powerful public health tool for preventing mental illness let me read this again spending time in nature is a powerful inexpensive powerful public health tool for preventing mental illness so if you have people who have mental illness take them to nature take them for a walk uh what does bible say about nature in um, genesis 2:15 the lord god took the man and settled him in the garden of eden and uh, um, so that they can cultivate and take care of it why did god build a nice mansion a building was it difficult for god to build a bungalow and put them into that uh, bungalow with all technology no god can do it but god created um Uh, trees and plants and animals so that they could spend time there so if you see here in anandanay's house behind there are a lot of trees and uh, gardens there this is the way we have to live in connection with uh, trees and plants uh, so we need there are so many rivers here around too psalms 23 what does it say the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake he leads us through the valleys he leads us through the river you know uh, so uh, if you see all over the bible uh, uh, jesus for example even he went and uh, prayed in the wilderness but he was in nature and isaiah 11:6 says the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lay down with kids and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them so here children shall be with animals are we having pets for our children that also helps with their mental well being pets nature so there is a research that shows that 72 percentage of religious commitment variables were bene uh, beneficial to mental health they were participation in religious services support prayer relationship with god so our 92 percentage of researchers said that uh, religiosity will help in mental health and spirituality as well now if you have someone who is depressed your friend your sister your colleague who is having some mental health problems how what will you do number 1 listen to them they need someone to listen to they feeling so lonely deep within themselves so try to talk to them and listen to them number 2 encourage them pray with them three is pray with them and four involve them in church invite them to the church and let them be involved in church activities assist them give try to uh, help them to find the purpose of their life god may have different purpose for me god may have different purpose for amudaka her purpose may be helping the patients 
my purpose may be helping the students, helping the women. Uh, uh, Mary Akas here, she's, she is dealing with mental uh, patients, right? Oh, I didn't realize that. So, yes, she's having a great responsibility. God has a purpose for her. Why is she there? So that she can help the patients. I know she's a, such a loving person, loving heart. And I'm sure those uh, patients will be benefited by her service. God has a purpose for every person. Um, here, mommy is here. Mommy, <laughs> she her purpose in life is to send messages to people all around and give. Tell them, Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. Pastor is there. Pastor preaches well. And Ardhane has a great mission to establish a community church and reach out to many people, not only here, but in different parts of the world. He's doing a great ministry. Every person has different purpose in life. We need to um, find out the purpose in life. Only then we will be able to have a connection with God. And whenever we are depressed, when we have problems, that purpose in life will help us to push forward. So we need to find, oh no, God wants me here. Um, Mary Akka the other day was telling me that uh, she almost met with an accident. And I was telling, no, no, God has a purpose for you still. You, God is not going to take you. God said, no, I'm not going to take you now, Mary. You be here. You have some purpose here. You know, so when we have a purpose in life, our um or even when we have troubles, we have financial issues, we have depression, nothing is going to touch us. And the next uh, point is we have to support the people to have a better relationship with God. Give them Bible study, help them to have a personal relationship with God. Next is accompany them to nature. When there is a person in depression, tell them, okay, let's go for a walk. Let's go out for a hike. Let's go to the river for a boating. So that will help them calm their mind and help them to help others when we help others they will be uh, that will also help them you know so uh, when a person is having some mental issues if they are given an opportunity to help another person they will feel much better so help them to help others so um, we have seen the rela uh, relationship between religiosity and spirituality and bible characters and that there are many in the Bible who had mental uh, problems, who were depressed. Uh, depression here is many times today we are sad, tomorrow will be okay. But depression is something that occurs for a long period of time, many weeks and many months. That's depression. So do not, that's clinical depression. So do not allow yourself to be depressed. When you face a problem, what do you have to do? Pray. Find the purpose of your life. Okay, God has created me for this. So let me do that. So some time ago, I had a job interview and I almost got it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. And then I did not. Okay. So uh, they said, we give you uh, the visa and all those things. But it did not happen. Um, I could have gone in depression. I would have been, I could have been sad, but I just replied to that person. He was my friend. So I just told him, God has a different purpose for me. That my purpose was not there in your institution. My purpose was something else, which I have to figure out. And God has a different purpose. So when we, any, any problem, financial issue or children are not uh, doing well, that's okay. That's going to, going to pass away. They are going through stages. They are going to, be well again. They're going to be good. Just trust God and leave everything to God. Then you will not be depressed. So um, I would like to say that nothing is difficult for the Lord. We can face all the problems and we can come out strong. The, as the gold has to go under the furnace, fiery furnace to be pure. We are going to be pure. We are going to be happy again. We are going to be in peace. We just have to relax when we are having problems. Everything is going to be all right. God is in control. And God will give us strength to bear every problem that we are undergoing. Don't you trust God? Um, the verse that I would like to read again as conclusion is found in Psalms 20, uh, 42, 11, which says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. 
for I will yet praise him and my savior and my God. So any problem that you face, what will you say? Why are you down cast, oh my soul? Why are you disgusted in me? Put your hope in God. Hope side church. Hope side church. We have hope. We give hope for the people. We have to be hopeful ourselves. As members of Hope Side Church, we should have hope. We should have hope of, that God is in control. Hope that God is going to give us a good future so that we can spread hope to the whole world. May God bless us as God leads us and as God helps us to overcome all the mental problem, all the depression in life. May God be with us. Amen. 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 Once again, shall we say amen to that? Amen. amen. Yes. God is the answer to all our problems. When we are depressed, we come to Him and He gives us peace. For our closing song, let us sing the song, Jesus is the sweetest name I know.
Oh Father, we come completely surrender each person who is born their heads before you and the people who are watching us online. Be with all of them. Give them your grace, your, your blessings throughout the weeks to come. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you once again everyone and happy gathered. We're so glad that each one of you are a, was a part of our service today. So it's time to meet and greet and I hope and pray that all of you will be safe and sound for the next week and hope to see you again. Once again happy Sabbath and stay blessed. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. 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 Happy Sabbath.